Hey, this is Pastor Steele. And I'm Pastor Kelly, and welcome to Midweek Service. We're excited about this message that we're going to be releasing over you. Mm -hmm. We're excited. Listen, I believe this is going to be a life-changing word. Yes. But before we get going, let's pray. Father, I cover those that are watching on tonight, God. Lord, I just ask that you continue to cover them. I even pray Psalm 91 and 7. You said a 1,000 would fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come near us. I pray divine protection over your people even right now. Yes, In God. Jesus' name we Jesus pray. Name. Amen and amen. Amen. We're so glad that you're here with us. We've got so many great things to get into. But before we do that, I want to remind you all this Saturday, it is Coffee and Conversation with Pastor Steele. You don't want to miss that. I'm going to be meeting with all the men at 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. this Saturday. I'm so looking forward to pouring into the men. Yes. You know, the word of God says in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, when I was a child, yep. I spoke as a child. Yes. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, mm-hmm. I put away childish things. Right. Because in order for you to evolve and grow and mature as a man, there are certain things that we got to put away, like insecurities, mm-hmm. and we got to put away immaturity. Yeah. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about that. Some other things as well. We're going to be doing some Q&A as well so it's going to be a good time i'm looking forward to it because i've met with the men it's been a minute yeah so i'm looking i'm really looking good. so forward to pouring into the men also this is offering time you know one of the ways that we've been able to do ministry for these last 19 years mm-hmm. and eight months well now it's 19 <laughs> years and nine months yeah. we're getting so close to our 20 year and we're so excited when we started this church we were in our 30s and now we're in our 50s and getting older getting older but yeah. the lord has been kind i can remember when we started the church we were on no medications, and now we're on several medications. <laughs> We've got you know, orange bottles man, lined up in our bathroom man, on each li- side. Lined up, <laughs> you know, but God is good. He's, ke- he's keeping he, us. He's, God's he's, a keeper, he's, amen. He's a keeper. Praise the Lord. But listen, that text to give number's coming up. We would love for you to text to give. Yes. Listen, you're helping us spread the good news. You're helping Remember us. this, when people get born again, when people uh, rededicate their life, yes. when people join the church, yes. your finances plays a part in that. That's right. So you are really helping us. So you can even say, literally, my finance is helping Kingdom in yes. the Valley Christian Church change lives. Yeah. So yeah. we encourage you, text to give as that number's coming up even now. Amen. And be a blessing. And I look, I always say, if you sow it, God will grow it. It's the truth. He will grow it. We've Genesis it. 8, 22 says, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and a harvest. Right. Remember, your harvest is connected to your seed. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for those that are sowing, yes, Lord. Thank you for ask that offering, you continue Jesus. to multiply their seed. Yes, we thank you for their obedience. And we thank you for Luke 6, 38. You said, give, and, and it, it shall be given yes, back Jesus. to us. So we pray blessing and prosperity over your people. In Jesus' Jesus name name. we pray, amen. Amen. So I'm excited about tonight's topic because there's this uh, movie trending right now on Netflix, on that app, um, called Deliverance, The Deliverance. And it is just number one everywhere. People are talking about it online, on social media. Mm. Um, And I asked Pastor, could we talk about that on the show today? I think it's very important that we understand um, that we do serve a God of deliverance. And it's 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 a horror film, so it's a demonic movie. I didn't watch the movie. I actually got my um, I put it on. And I went through each screen like with my little remote control because I don't like scary movies. I don't like to open up my spirit to that. I don't like the demonic, even though I know I've got power and victory in Jesus. I just don't open myself up to it. But I like to be aware of what's trending and what's going on, and I want to be made aware of it. I thought it was interesting that people are interested in the supernatural world because if you believe in Jesus, you've got to believe in the devil. If you believe in the power of God, you got to believe that there's an enemy out that goes to and fro trying to see who can devour. Mm-hmm. So we live in a very supernatural world, even though we're in the natural. So Deliverance Pastor is actually a true story about a woman and her three kids. The woman's name was Latanya Ammons. She's... That's her name. Mm. She had three children. This happened in Gary, Indiana back in 2011. Okay. And according to the Indianapolis Star, the newspaper, according to the Department of Child Protective Services, law enforcement, and hospital staff, there was demonic activity going on with this family. Mm. And it started when they moved into a rental home. It was her, her mother, um, and her three kids. And they started dealing footsteps and demonic stuff and voices and noises. Pretty soon, 
her children were speaking in um, demonic uh, voices. They were growling. Their eyes were rolling in the back of their head. And the kids were going to school bruised and banged up. So the teachers are like, what's happening to wow. you? They're trying to explain there's these demons in our house. Now, it didn't help the mom was an alcoholic. So she comes in thinking, it's not me. It's the demons. You know, of course, they think she's nuts. They went ahead and got CPS involved, Child Protective Services, trying to find out where they were bruised, bruised up while they were in the hospital. The one of the the boy, the nine year old boy, actually manifested a demon, and according to hospital staff, climbed up a wall. Okay, this is like real demonic activity going on, and I mean, so it was like a phenomenon. And Lee Daniels, the director of this film, knew of the story, and went ahead and did it. And of course, in the story they show the process of them being delivered from it. But now um, this family had psychi psychi uh, psychiatrists evaluate them. They had um, uh, the kids were saying they were being thrown across the room by invisible forces. Just all the stuff that happens when you allow a demon to have activity in your life. Um, but now they were delivered. They go to church regularly, and they're just a regular family that really don't want to talk about. What they've gone through, although I'm sure they're getting, I hopefully getting compensated for the story for this movie. But um, the mom said that there was a dark higher power in that house. They since moved out of the house, and I guess the house has been demolished since then. Mm. So it, it's a lot going on. But this is what I want to say: as Christians, as we're watching these movies, we have to know that there is truth to supernatural power, and um, we come from a healing and deliverance ministry before we started kingdom your father bishop Steele, had a very strong deliverance ministry i wanted you to talk a little bit about that yeah you know um yeah we kind of cut our teeth on you know healing and deliverance yes matter of fact the name of my dad's church was called rama uh christian center healing and deliverance center mm -hmm. so we saw a lot of demonic and satanic activity Manifest. Matter of fact, services were no less than three and a half hours. Right. Um, there was times where I would follow my dad around when he would cast spirits out of people, mm -hmm. and they would puke up green and yellow stuff. And you, you would, she would watch me walk around with my dad with a garbage, not bag, but a can. Yes. You know, because we had a lot of activity going on. We've seen people levitate oh, above we've the ground. Seen all that. Oh, people yeah. talk in like demonic voices. Like yeah. we that that is your pastor's spiritual background. Right. <laughs> um and so saw it all. We so, saw it all. So we saw people that were possessed, oppressed. Yes. You know, with different spirits. Yes. Because I believe you can be uh 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 overtaken and overpowered by different spirits. Yes. You know, and, but I do believe, obviously, you can be delivered from them as well. Absolutely. You know, so... Uh, so First John 4, 4 says, you, dear children, mm -hmm. are from God yeah. and have overcome because the one who is in you is greater than the one in the world. That right. one is talking about Jesus. Yes. So let's just clarify this. Jesus is more powerful than any demon than any devil. In fact, Jesus has all victory, so we don't walk in fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. That's right. So we know that we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and because of Jesus. And de demonic activity can come in the form of negative thoughts, um, negative ideas, suggestions. It can also come in actual possession and oppression, like you said. And because we came from that, that's a very real part of our our spiritual world um pastor do you remember the time we um we had that lady stay in our house and she called out that demon's name oh my and, god and um you want to share that story yeah a friend of ours from high school is actually living with us mm -hmm. for a season and um we were uh sitting around talking one late night and she was into ouija boards yep and she said the ouija board's name mm. and when she was uttering i said don't and, and i couldn't i couldn't get it all out because i was literally saying don't say his name but she had the opportunity to say the name, yeah. and that thing was released presence. that evening, the right. presence of that spirit. Right. So uh, we were in our bed later that night, and I woke up, and I saw this black thing by my door just sitting there. It was small, but the eyes were really huge, and it just stared at me. So he didn't tell me because, mm -hmm. you know, we're young in the Lord, yeah. and he didn't want to sound crazy. Right. So then I'm in, the next day I'm in the um, living room or kitchen cooking, uh -huh. and I see this black thing run across the floor. 
And of course, me, I said, hey, wait a minute. I know you're gonna think I'm tripping, but I saw a black thing run across the floor mm -hmm. right now. And Pastor's like, I saw a black thing in the room last night. Yep. So so we got some cooking oil, believe it or not. <laughs> we, we couldn't afford we olive come, oil. We come from a church where they believe in laying hands. With the uh, oil. The Bible says call on the elders <laughs> of the church, you know, and anoint their head with That's oil. Right. And so we got the oil out, and we started casting that spirit out of our apartment. Yes. We went through every room. Yes. Um, we opened up the windows. Right. And so on and so forth, because we believe Proverbs 18 and 21 that death and life is in the power of the tongue. That's right. And we begin to speak death to that spirit. That's now, right. what's interesting, when all this popped off, we hardly even went to church back then. We were super young. We were like early, early 20s. Yes. But coming from a background, you know, a healing and deliverance background, mm -hmm. we knew that as believers that we have authority. Like my wife just quoted 1 John 4, 4, the King James Version says, greater is he Come on. that is in, in me, me than yes. he that is in the world, mm -hmm. talking about the Holy Spirit. Right. So thank God that we have been empowered with the Holy Spirit. So we we have a leverage. Yes. We have an edge over these different spirits. And once we cast that spirit out of our uh, house, mm -hmm. our apartment, I even opened up the front door, <laughs> amen, and we never, had, we never had an encounter with that thing again. Yep. And it was crazy because I saw it that evening. She saw it the next day, yep. but I was too afraid to tell her because I thought she might have to check me into a mental institution, <laughs> right. you know, thinking I got the spirit of weird on me. <laughs> but then when she said she saw it, I was mm -hmm. like, baby, I'm not going to lie. I saw it last night That's as well. Right. And we described this thing to a T. Mm -hmm. At that time, we were only like 21, mm -hmm. 22. 20. Yeah, man, we're 51, yeah. 52 now. So Barely we're talking, went to church, we're like talking some said. 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah, we were not consistently But we going knew to church. enough. We knew enough to say, to know we had power to, to cast that thing Gosh, out. Cause you, that. Yeah, because you <laughs> said 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Yes. God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's right. But a power, love, and a sound mind, mind. Yeah. so remember you have power over these different demonic and satanic spirits right and honestly that's why the movie of our life if you will lasted for about two minutes because we knew wait blood of jesus get out of here these movies that we watch go on and on because no one's talking about the blood no one's talking about jesus like in the name of jesus demons flee so these deliverance movies on Netflix would be really quick if they knew the power that they had within the name. We want you to know the power Amen. you have by using the name of Jesus. That's so right. Mark 9, 17, 22 comes back to a demonic story um, that proves demonic possession is possible and it is real. Um, it says, a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my son who's possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him into the ground. He foams at the mouth. He gnashes his teeth, becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive the spirit out, but they could not. And then Jesus says to the disciples, you and believing generation, how long will I stay with you or suffer with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So Jesus was frustrated because they were not able to put this demon out of this boy. And then, um, so I just want to share that story with you to let you know that just like these kids in Gary, Indiana, were having these issues with these spirits, Jesus was dealing with these spirits as well. And they didn't have the faith to put the demon out. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, how much longer? Must I suffer with thee? And it's sad because Jesus had been spending time with these disciples. Mm -hmm. He'd been pouring into them. He'd been mentoring them. And his thing is, I thought by now that y'all would catch my spirit. I thought you Unfortunately, would. Unfortunately, they didn't. Right. And they couldn't do, they couldn't do it. And he had to go in there and take initiative. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, greater work shall we do. Right. You got to remember Romans 8 and 11 says the same spirit mm. that raised Jesus from the dead lives in your mortal body. That's right. You got to know what's on the inside of you. Yes. And then you're able to have the confidence to go in situations and you can begin to cast out demons and devils and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. I love those kind of opportunities. <laughs> I believe I was born for it, praise yeah. God. So I don't tippy toe around. That's another thing. You can't be passive aggressive when it comes to dealing with different spirits Come like on. that. You, you gotta can't. you gotta be spiritually aggressive. Mm -hmm. Even the Bible says the kingdom of God mm. suffereth violence, violence, but the violent take it by force. That's right. That word violent means that we have to be radical for God. You yeah. know, at, 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 at all times, especially when you're dealing with something very demonic and satanic. Absolutely. Another story in Mark 1, 21 through 26, it says that they went to Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and talked. This is talking about Jesus. The Bible says that they were astonished at his teachings for he taught them as one having authority. You just talked about authority. Mm -hmm. 
And then it says, now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. Mm. And he cried out saying, let us alone. We have, we, what we have to do with you of Jesus of Nazareth. Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. This is the demonic force in this man in church that's asking Jesus, why are you here? You're here to torment us because this man was again demon possessed. But look at this authority. Even the demon, the devil in this man said, I know you're the Holy One of God. Mm. And Jesus said to him, be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had um, convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Jesus says, shut up and come out. There wasn't a fight. There wasn't a right. holy water. There wasn't a war. There wasn't a battle. There wasn't like a fight. Listen, you have power and authority mm. to call out demons and unclean spirits in people, in atmospheres, in your home. Mm -hmm. You have the power to plead the blood of Jesus. You have the power to say the name of Jesus. You have the power to tell demonic activity, shut up and get out in That's the name right. of Jesus. And that, that was Jesus' example. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a movie. It wasn't a fight. It wasn't a war. It was call it out and be be quiet and get out of them in Jesus' name. And we've we've had experience of that where you've had to tell people, some people that are demon possessed, which is very real. It can happen. Be quiet and come out in the name of Jesus. And there's no no there's no issue with that person at all. Right. No, because it's not that person. It's that spirit. Right. That's in that person that you're really talking to. Right. And so I've had to tell a few people, you know, along the way, don't take it personal. I'm not really talking to you, but I'm talking to that spirit that. Right. And I like how it said it called it an unclean, an unclean spirit, an unclean spirit. That's right. Because there are times all of us have dealt with some unclean spirits That's right. and I always say what you don't identify you can't crucify. So you have to identify what the issue is so mm -hmm. that the issue can ultimately be resolved. But I believe that we do live in a day and time where people are getting even more and more passive aggressive. Right. You know, but and it, even the book of Timothy, it talks about they have a form of, of godliness, godliness but on. denying the power thereof. You know, they're just going through the regular rituals of, of religion, if you will. Mm -hmm. it, that's having a form that's of cool. godliness. But and it goes on, it says, but denying the power thereof. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you can be in church and still be powerless. Mm. Listen, God wants you and me to be powerful. That's right. Even Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he said, I've given you power. Yes. I've given you authority yes. to trample yes. over scorpions and serpents. Yep. That doesn't literally mean scorpions and serpents. Let's keep the text in the context. Don't get snakes that, that, and bugs. Right, no. right, right. We've seen people do crazy things like that, mm -hmm. and not they're not here anymore. What that <laughs> literally means when you keep the text in the context over evil forces, and it means when it talks about scorpions and serpents, it's talking about that he's giving you power to trample over scorpions and serpents, That's over right. over evil forces and yeah. evil spirits. That's right. You're, you're able to put that stuff in check yes. because you've got to remember this, the word of God says in the book of Matthew that you are justified by your words and you are condemned, condemned. by your words. Yep. So when it comes to dealing with different spirits, that's a good time to begin to use your mouth. Your mouth is your biggest weapon, Come praise on. God. Even the Bible says in Job uh, uh, 22 and, and, and 28, it says, if you decree a thing, yes. it shall be established. Pastor, I don't have peace. Start decreeing you have peace. Come on. I lost my joy. Start decreeing you have joy. That's right. Even the Bible says in Psalm 30, verse 5, it says, Weeping may endure at night, Come on. But, but joy comes in the morning. That's right. It's up to you. I've learned this in life. Life, life is all about decisions and choices. Yep. It's time for you to begin to make the right decision mm -hmm. to make the right choices. So ultimately, you can benefit and others will benefit as well right. when you take your rightful role in the kingdom of God. I love that, your rightful role, meaning that we shouldn't be not just passive aggressive, but we can't be timid. And That's I it. love the That's scripture, good. Pastor, you talked about how a form of godliness, a lot of times mm. today in 2024, we have a, we see a form of godliness. Yeah. You know, we go to church, we, we think we're good within our own, you know, self-righteousness. We, we go to church more as a, a, a gathering, not a spiritual encounter, but more of just to say I went. Um, I get afraid of those type of, you know, I'm air quoting lukewarm churches that really don't talk about 
Holy Spirit. Don't talk about demonic activity. Don't talk about spiritual warfare, which spiritual warfare absolutely is real. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, right. but against spirits and principalities. So you have to do that. And so what happens when you have a form of godliness, you will allow demonic activity going on around you and like not knowing what to do. You know, you will think, I don't know why my child's doing this or why I feel like this at my home or while this is happening or I'm hearing noises and stuff in your house. I get people that DM me and reach out to me with all kinds of things. I hear noises in my house at night. I'm like, well, rebuke it. Well, rebuke, what do you mean? I'm like, okay, the blood of Jesus, you're rebuked in Jesus' name. Nothing's going to torment you. I'm not afraid of demonic activity because the Holy One lives inside of me. The Holy One that that demon recognized in that scripture we talked about in Matthew 15, 21, or we talked about in Mark 1 and 21, the demon recognized the Holy One. That means that the Holy One lives in us. We can call on that and be like, no, we're not going to have mm. that here. So, sure. Pastor, really quick, can you explain the difference between um, demonic oppression and demonic possession, just the difference between the two? Yeah, I believe because we're blood bought. I don't believe as a Christian you can be demon possessed, mm -hmm. but you can be oppressed right. with different spirits. Right. You know, um, and I know everybody's got their opinion when it comes to that, but I just firmly believe that when the blood of Jesus has mm -hmm. covered you, right. you can't be possessed, but you can be oppressed. Amen. And and it's not the will of God for you to be either one. Right. Because the Bible says in John 8 32, it says, Whom the Son has set free Come on. is free indeed. indeed. But it's up to you every day to make a decision to walk in that freedom, to walk in deliverance, right. praise God. Right. Because there's no reason why you should be saved and bound. No. You know, that is not God's best for you or for mm -hmm. me. He does not want you bound. Right. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, yes. there's liberty. Mm -hmm. He wants me and you to be liberated, praise God. Yeah. And how do I get liberated? Well, first you give your life to the Lord, praise right. God. Right. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. And then number two, he said he's giving you the keys Come on. to the kingdom. kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Right. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Mm -hmm. Keys speak of authority. Right. So you have to walk in your kingdom authority. Right. And then you will have the upper hand. Then you will have the leverage when it comes to dealing with demonic and satanic stuff. Right. So with, so before you're saved, you could feel like you're not necessarily possessed, but there's something in you that is maybe not of God. It's like maybe a dark spirit or a dark force. I can admit that before I gave myself to Jesus. I remember feeling something like scales come off my eyes, and I remember feeling delivered of something, probably some demonic force or influence. Not that I was climbing walls or this or that, but some influence. And I remember my eyes, I could see clear again. And I specifically remember that because I thought it was seeing clear, but it wasn't until that thing was removed during a deliverance service. I'm like, wow, I can really see. And I felt a freedom that I'd never felt before. So that could be one. But oppression is that heaviness, that thing you're bound to. Like you said, pastor, you just can't let, mm. you can't, just can't shake it. We, we prayed for people in our church that are oppressed. And, you know, we lay hands on each other, not because we have the power, but we lay hands in agreement and we lay hands touching and speaking the name of Jesus. And we've seen chains literally fall off of people because they're oppressed. Mm. So we want to make sure you understand that difference. You know, there's a story that I love this story in Matthew 15, 21 through 28 about um, the woman, the Canaanite woman that says, have mercy on me, son of David, my daughter's demon possessed. And, of course, you all know the story. Jesus went to her and was like, basically said, I'm not going to give, you know, what I have to dogs. Mm -hmm. um, because Canaanites back then actually worshipped dogs. There's a history behind that. But she says, please, Lord, help me. And Jesus says, you know, it's not good to get children's bread to little dogs. But then the woman says, yes, but still, even the little dogs eat the crumbs from the table. And then, of course, at that point, Jesus says, you know, your faith has made, you know, I'm impressed by your faith. And then he goes on to say, your daughter will be free. Your daughter will be free from that bondage, which, again, shows the simplicity of Jesus healing. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because the, these movies that we watch, Deliverance, make it seem as though the devil has all this power and advantage against us. But he doesn't have power like that. We've got the power. The only power he has is the power you give him. That's right. And so I want to make sure that you all know that we've got the power, that our faith can cause deliverance. 
Our faith can cause you to be set free from oppression. Our faith can set us set free from possession, that the blood and power of Jesus is stronger than any devil in hell. And I'm glad that these movies are coming out because it is striking interest in supernatural power. But what I don't like is Hollywood making it seem like the devil has so much advantage upon us, and he does not. This family, the the family that the story was about, man, that would have been a, a one day situation in Jesus' name. We would have came in there with some oil, mm. laid hands on a little nine year old boy. No, you ain't staying here like this. And the reason why I can say that is because we've had actual um, history of doing that before we started our own church, and we still encounter that to de- to this day. And we don't have a problem, like you said, Pastor, laying hands on somebody that is struggling with right. a demon that is warring with them. That's right. That, you know what, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No and that weapon. includes demonic activity or oppression mm-hmm. or sickness or whatever the enemy tries to put on you to keep you bound. We rebuke and bind it in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus is strong enough, stronger than any devil in hell. Amen. So, you know, it's really important that to know that, remember the story in Matthew 8, 28, where this man was um, demon possessed, another example of possession because I want, I don't want to discount it, but here it is. The man was possessed, and they cried out to them. The demons cried out and said, "What business do you have here with us, Son of God? You come to torment us before the time." And then there was a herd of pigs feeding in the distance, and Jesus comes and says, "Go out of this man that was demon possessed." And the demons came out. The man got in the pigs. And the pigs ran and went crazy and jumped off the side of the cliff. Crazy story. But again, (laughs) proof that demonic activity, supernatural activity is real. And it was not a big deal to Jesus. And it shouldn't be a big deal to you. All right? I don't want it to become a big deal to you at all. So I want you to understand that you can put on the whole armor of God. That's right. Found in Ephesians 6, 11, and 13. The whole armor of God that you can stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil. And again, like I said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But we, uh, but against principalities, spiritual powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And then the Bible says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. And you've got to take up the whole armor of God that you'll be able to withstand in the, in the evil day. And then having all to do, stand therefore. So we have the ability to pick up the whole armor of God. And that's where true deliverance comes from. And that's where it is about. And so I wanted to talk about this. And thank you, Pastor, for letting us mm-hmm. discuss this today during our midweek service. So we can be spiritually armed and dangerous. That's right. And we can let people know that might be trending about this movie and talking about this movie. Or maybe your kids watch the movie or whatever. Let them know, no, no, this movie would have been about two minutes long. Because in the name of Jesus, that demon's gone. It's out in Jesus' name. And we're done with it. Because we have power. We've got supernatural power. That's right. And we don't have a form of godliness. We acknowledge the power that God has given us, and we can deliver, set free, and heal according to the word of God. Mm, That's so powerful. And I think that as, you know, the Hosea 4 and 6, it says, my people, they perish for lack of knowledge. The last thing we want is, as you're watching this midweek, is to perish for lack of knowledge. I pray you've been able to take some good notes, you know, because it's so important to know who you are and whose you are. You know, um, even David, when he had to go toe-to-toe with Goliath, yeah. I love when he said, you come to me with a javelin, a, a sword, and a spear. Right. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Yes. I had to look up that word host a while ago, years ago. It means when he literally said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, that means the God of the universe. You got to remember that the God of the universe mm-hmm. He has your best interests. All you have to do is keep walking in faith, amen, and keep believing. That word believe means I'm convinced yes. that God has my best interests. Mm-hmm. And look at all the tools he left us. Yes, He left us, one of the tools he left us was the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. Thank you, God. amen. And that's why every day we have to, you know, remember that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Right. That alone gives you the upper hand. Right. That alone right gives you the edge over Satan. Mm-hmm. Another thing he gave you, he said in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind Come on. 
be in you yes. that was also in Christ yes. Jesus. If we can just learn how to put on the mind of Christ, yes. we'll begin to have his outlook. Right. We will begin to have his viewpoint when it comes to dealing with certain situations. Mm -hmm. And then those situations won't have dominion over you. Right. I'm not going to let no demonic no satanic spirit master me. Come on. Because I've been given authority. That's I've been right. doing a series between August and September called The Tables Are Turning. Right. But the tables will never turn until you start walking in the Holy Spirit. That's right. And allowing the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to call the shots in your life. That's right. And I love that about your thinking because we have so many times where people have come to us after church. Pastor, I'm just being tormented. I'm being tormented. You know, and I'm like, wait, no, put on the mind of Christ, use your authority. Second Corinthians 10, 3 and 5 talks about that we don't walk in the flesh. We walk in the spirit, right? We walk in the spirit. And guess what? We pull down strongholds. We cast down arguments of every high thing that exalts itself mm. under the knowledge of God, right. bringing every thought, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, so that's not even being possessed or oppressed. That's just you not knowing how powerful your mind is. Stop imagining mm. demonic stuff. Stop imagining things happening. Stop uh, pull that down in the name of Jesus and be like, no, no. My house is a house that is protected by the blood of Jesus. My house is a house that is holy. My the, the God has put a hedge of protection around my family and I. I rebuke these imaginations in Jesus' name, and I am going to exalt the knowledge that I have in God That's that it. our God is powerful, our God is mighty, mm. and that no devil in hell has any chance against the God I serve and the God, the, the, the power that lives within me, the very mm. same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in our bodies. So I'm not going to imagine I'm being overtaken by anything. And so we just want you to be spiritually armed and dangerous. That's right. We want you to know that you've got the power of That's deliverance. Right that you've got the power to rebuke anything that is not of God out of your home, out of your mind, out of your workplace, and that you've got absolute authority because of Jesus Christ. That's a good word. And remember that, because of Jesus Christ. I, you know, I, I see so many people that are living a, a defeated life, Yeah. and they call themselves a Christian. Mm -hmm. Listen, at the end of the day, let's look that God wants the tables to begin to turn to where you have the ability to walk in faith. You have the ability to walk, you know, in his favor. Yes. He, he wants you to experience his faith. He, yes. You know, listen, Romans 12 and 3, he said he's given us all mm -hmm. a measure of faith. Okay. My question to you tonight is what are you doing with your measure? It's good. You got to work your faith. Yep. You can work your way out of that demonic and satanic season that yes, you you're did. potentially in. Oh, Pastor, I've been depressed. I've been depressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been too. Yep. Faith your way out of it. <laughs> That's what I had to do. Yeah. And I've only been depressed maybe once or twice in my life. But one of the times is when I lost my father almost five years ago. My wife will tell you I went through a time of depression. Yeah. But then I had to remember Psalm 30, verse 5, weeping may endure at night. Come on. But joy comes in the, in the morning. I had to shake myself. Mm -hmm. I had to shake off that depression. Yes. Even um, the Bible says, um, um, I was going, oh, Psalm 30, verse 11. He said, I'll turn your mourning yes. into dancing. Yes. You know, and that's what God wants to do for those of you that are watching. Maybe you've you've hit a wall and maybe you're going through a time of of uh, 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 fear or, or anxiety. Yeah. Or like my wife said, you're in a time of where you just feel very timid yeah it's time to shake yourself that's right it's time for you to take to take 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 initiative mm -hmm. you know over those different spirits and not allow those spirits to have dominion and master you the that's devil right. is a lie that's amen right. you have the power to break that thing mm -hmm. so you can not only just be saved but delivered that's so good i hope y'all enjoyed this message tonight and i hope that it impacted you and that you took good notes and that you're able to talk about it maybe after with your family people at Amen. work because it is kind of a hot topic right now but i'm so thankful to god that we have the knowledge of what the word of god says about it and like pastor said you can be set free and live a delivered life amen to that in jesus name amen listen i want to encourage you again those of you that have watched the program 
there's an opportunity for you to sow if you didn't do that early on. Yes. There's a number coming up even right now. This is our midweek service. We've kind of pivoted to doing online only, and yep. it's actually been going good. Yep. We went through some major withdrawals. We missed not, being with not the being in the building. Yeah, we, we, you yeah. know, but you know, we're still in prayer about if we're going to come back or not. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we're grateful for all you that have been watching um, on Wednesday nights, and then some of you are even able to watch it even later on in the week because we leave it up. Praise God. But again, we encourage you. So, yeah, you know, we appreciate you. Remember, if you sow it, God will grow absolutely it. he Hallelujah. will he will and we love you so much we love you and we cannot wait till sunday don't forget saturday coffee with pastor and then sunday we'll be back in the building for another powerful jersey word. sunday jersey sunday remember wear your favorite nfl jersey or college jersey amen but football is back praise yeah, god we're gonna be celebrating so, grandparents day yep. and there's a tailgate party after yep. both three hot dogs and water yeah sunday's gonna be great it's i'm gonna actually i'm actually looking forward to Me sunday too. uh remember we do a 9 a.m experience and an 11 11 a.m yeah. experience we're praying for you we love you god bless